Sketchcraft is recorded in front of a live internet audience and supported by listeners like you. Please be sure to leave a review on iTunes, like and share our Facebook page, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All links can be found at sketchcraft.com. That's sketchcraft, C-R-A-F-T, the name of the podcast, dot com. Remember, every little bit counts and it all helps to grow the show. Thanks. Welcome to Sketchcraft, the podcast for art, games, and process junkies. I'm Rob Duenas, full-time illustrator and graphic artist elsewhere. This is an unedited podcast, which will probably contain strong language, so listener discretion is advised. Cast of Sketchcraft, the podcast for art, games, and process junkies. It's been a while since I've done one of these little rants. So today's going to be 25 things I wish they had taught me in art school. Now, this isn't really a critique of whether you should or shouldn't go or invest in any kind of form of uh, formal education or, you know, be saddled with $50,000 of debt for the next 25, 30, 40, 50 endless years. Um, this is really just some shit I really wish they had gone through. Um, and I know they never will because art schools are more about meeting, you know, criteria than than um, developing talent, in my opinion. So um, you can't put this stuff kind of um, always in a syllabus or syllabi. Uh, however, I don't care. These are some things I really wish they had taught. Uh, I could probably do 125 easily, but for the sake of the podcast, I'm going to keep this kind of thin. Let's move on. So number one. When you take a freelance job, uh, give your client uh, the choice. So what this means is it, it takes very little effort. Um, so first off, they never really talk about freelancing in art school. So that would be one. One, fucking actually tell people, hey, you're going to freelance, which in my opinion, in art schools, they mostly just think they're going to get you a job somewhere and you're going to work for a big company and make lots of money and that ain't happening. So you're going to have to learn that freelance is part of the game. On some level. And when you do do that, you, you, you want to give them a choice as much as possible up front. You don't want to give them a lot of choices in the back end. So um, I always say develop as many initial comps or roughies, as I like to call them, as pop as you can in the beginning. And do half and half. Do half completely original and do half completely derivative. Because chances are they're going to want something they've seen before with their own little like spin. But in the event that some client uh, wants to call you up two years later and complain that it wasn't 100% original, you're able to go back and show how they picked that shit and all the other shit you gave them. Um, you can just be like, hey, you know, you picked this, you know. So if pop, if, if originality was the game, no one would be using Times Roman and everything else uh, as a font. So uh, I had a situation like that pop up recently where someone that I did work for two years ago was mad that I used a font or they felt I used a font and they didn't even get that right. So um, I was like, yeah, as a basis. And then I drew a bunch of other shit. So I I don't know. Um, But like I said, you want to give them a choice. You just want to make certain that uh, it's all up at the front rather than the end, because that basically means you're going to be doing a whole new project if they change their mind towards the end. Uh, secondary, number two, allow input. So you allow the input at that stage. And I'm going to be honest, you have to stress to figure out what it is they want. I really think like in art schools, like one of the things they don't simulate very well is what it's like to meet someone and they, they know what they want, but they don't know how to articulate it. And as an artist, or especially a freelance contract artist, you're trying to sort of extract that vision from their head. And it's very Zen-like. It's like a, it's almost like interrogation on a level. You want to sort of, you know, really kind of make certain that when um, they say, hey, I want something to be like this artist, that that can mean one of two things. That can mean they want it to look like how that artist drew or they want it to look like how that artist thought and the kind of ideas that they came up with. Those are two very separate things. So you really want to like uh, hone in on that that talent, you know, of, of sort of interrogating, right, for the lack of a kinder word, your your client. Number three, if you're unable to create uh, what 
the client wants, then back out. Ending the deal will result in better long-term options. Art school never, again, they never talk about freelance, and when they do, the last thing they want to tell you is when to get the hell out of Dodge. Basically, I've experienced it kind of like this. Um, you realize that art school ain't going to get you a job, so you start taking on as many freelance things you can get. Everyone knows you're an artist, friends of friends, people on the internet. They offer you things. You take everything you can because you have bills to pay, you want money, and uh, half of them go well, the other half go horribly wrong. And I have, over the years, worked through, I call it working through, projects that I should have quit at the beginning. I'll give you a point in case where I finally, I finally learned my lesson in the spring of 2008 or 9. I think it was 9. And uh, it was right after play kind of fell through and I needed some money. I took on a side job for this thing called Pretty Scary Girls or something like that. Some nice guys trying to do an animation pitch for Fox Animation. And there was two guys, one of them was an artist, and the guy who wrote it really liked his artist's art style, but the guy couldn't do anything because he was busy. So he liked the fact that I could mimic stuff and wanted to know if I could sort of work in this guy's art style. And I said, I did a test, and I said, yeah, I could. And he was happy with the test. So I said, great. Um, but what it sort of became very clearly to me was that he really wanted me to be that artist, right down from ideas to exact way that like the nails were designed and the, the eyes looked, the lips looked like, I mean, he didn't just want me to emulate. He wanted that guy. And I don't even think he knew it. So I came to the point very early on that I realized that this was going nowhere. Um, if they aren't on board, if they aren't excited or impressed and, and want to make contributions and, and the contributions are different than, going back to formula, right? Scrapping everything and going back to phase one. If they are on board with that, get the hell out because it's just going to be more trouble than it's worth. Way more trouble than it's worth. This brings me to number four. Take work you are motivated to do not to pay the bills. Now, I, I'm the first one to tell you I want to get paid and I want to get paid um, appropriately. However, I have been handed large sums of money up front before for things that I could care less to do and that a large amount of money has never motivated me to get the work done. However, I'll be way motivated to draw some stupid little, you know, Ninja Turtle sketch and um, get that all knocked out. And it'll look 10 times better than the thing I did for the guy that paid me a lot of money uh, because I wasn't motivated to work on the project. Uh, so if, if going back to the last point, if it isn't working out, you aren't going to be motivated to finish or finish well. So all you're going to end up with right, is a project that took too much time, cost, uh, produced very, very little money, um, and in the end, sort of ruined your portfolio and maybe pissed off a client. So nothing works out long term. You know, you're never, oh, I'm going to take this, this gets to the next point, to number five. The reward is the work, but cash is important and necessary. However, remember, you will rarely be paid for the actual effort. So what I mean by this is, when you say, take the work you're motivated to do, not to pay the bills, what that's saying is you have to pay your bills, but you are never, in my opinion, very rarely, going to be paid the amount of money um, versus the amount of time you spend on a project. Like, you're not going to be paid like an hourly wage, you know? Oh, I'm Unless you're making tens of thousands of dollars, like if you already hit that level. You hit that level, you're way beyond that. But, but rising up from the ranks, right? Very rarely will you give, you be paid the amount of effort. So if you aren't um, being motivated, if you aren't motivated to finish it, if you aren't motivated by the work involved, then, I mean, more money, little money, whatever, uh, it doesn't matter because you're not being paid the amount of effort it would take to get the job done. So your best is just back the fuck out. Um, and just be aware. Be paid a, f a fair price, you know, but also find out what else it is you're getting from it. Those early jobs, you know, you don't want to undercut. However, sometimes it's a limited bracket. Like I know in indie comics, the most I ever saw from a page was somewhere between twenty and a hundred dollars a page. You know, so most often than not, in indie comics, they have a budget of a hundred dollars a page for everything to be done from the publisher. That means uh, colorist and artist. Uh, they generally skip inkers these days um, unless they can get an inker like down in Mexico for super cheap. So, um, you know, you're saying, hey, that's me making 50 bucks a page, right? So, you know, to make 50 bucks 
times 22, what, you're making like $1,000 for how many hours, you know, of stuff? I mean, that, that's not an hourly wage. So just be aware of that. But maybe you're getting a whole book out of it. Maybe you're getting some experience out of it. So there you go. Number six, uh, likewise, don't spend any more time on it than necessary. Don't procrastinate and find ways to motivate yourself if you're lagging. So what this means is you need to take work, one that you're comfortable doing, that you feel like you have a good grip on what the idea of it is. So you're not spending a ton of time trying to figure it out. Um, if you do take on a job that's a little bit more difficult, um, then then you need to make certain that you aren't spending six hours racking your head over something. When you could probably spend like two. And what I mean is, I remember once I took a job where the client wanted these characters pointing a gun right at the screen or the audience. And there was a lot of crazy perspective with that. And I spent forever just like, okay, working it out, working it out, working it out. Finally, I'm like, you know, fuck this shit. I took a couple photographs and just worked the poses out and then pumped up the perspective based on that, on those photos. Uh, because for me to just sit there and, and work out the, the perspective without, you know, even any kind of reference at that point, I just realized that my mind didn't want to like, didn't want to do the math, right? So um, you just don't want to spend on it any more time on it than necessary. Uh, this gets back to like, like coloring too, like, I'm not going to do flats because it's just going to, I'm going to drag it out. I'll take four times the amount of time as opposed to paying someone 25 bucks to knock it out super fast. So uh, also, if you are finding that it's four in the afternoon and you've yet to start your work day, like you're supposed to start back at like 10 a.m., um, that means you're just avoiding doing the work. Even if you want to do it, sometimes you drag it out. So find ways to get your ass moving. I find that um, that's when I'll turn on live stream. Because if I feel people are watching me, I tend to move faster. <laughs> so uh, find out what works for you. Um, they don't really like to talk about uh, you not working So in art school. They just give you a syllabus and always assume you're going to be told what to do and you're going to do it. So I don't know. Um, seven, start hard and finish slow. This is my personal way to work. I prefer to start a project really hard. Like if I'm going to start it, I'm going to crank a bunch of stuff out at first. And then... Once I hit the midway point or a little bit past midway point, then I slow down and start to do um, less per day, but I maintain the quality. So um, I just find that if I if I start slow and get a good feel for it and then try to rank it, rank, uh, speed it up, as I get closer to a deadline, there seems to be like a level of pressure. So I like to coast into the deadline on like easy street. Uh, this avoids crunch time. Crunch time is really a state of mind, in my opinion, and poor planning. So you could be working, you know, kind of like a little late on something, but you should never be pulling 16-hour days right before something's due. First off, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, you're going to make mistakes. And then you're going to ship those fucking mistakes out. So um, it is a very hard and, might I add, mature thing to do to start all your work really, really fast and then get over that hump quick and then move slow. And then if you want to go back and refine some of it, you'll have the time to do it. You know, you'll be giving yourself that cushion to kind of work it out, you know. Uh, number eight, be mindful of your opportunities. Don't waste time watching what other artists are doing. You know, in art school it, it, and in life, it, I've sort of experienced, like, you see these artists who have tremendous talent, probably way more than you. Uh, I, I was surrounded by a few and you're always like, oh, this guy got a deal. Oh, this guy's drawing, you know, storyboards for this company. Oh, this girl, she's working at Sony or she's, you know, this girl went to Paramount and Nickelodeon and I'm fucking around. Like, that's good to an extent. Like, okay, I want to be motivated. However, not everyone gets the same opportunities. You know, someone was asking me recently, like, w w w what company do you want to work for? And as of right now, I can't think of one that really wants what I do, you know? I'm a talented person, I believe, and I always, you know, enhance a, a, a an atmosphere in which I'm I'm put to the task. However, you know, places have needs, and they find the person to fill their needs, not your dreams. So just because I want to work at a place doesn't mean that that place specifically is looking for what I produce or can produce. Um, likewise, if if someone's doing really really well, you know, honestly, you really shouldn't be focusing on what they're doing. You're gonna spend your whole fucking time thinking about them. And no time working on what you're doing. I put my head down. 
I'm on, you know, the Facebooks and I talk to other artists and stuff, but I don't really get involved in like, well, what did they do today? What did this cat do today? You know, I'm on there really to facilitate the fans, the few fans and the dedicated people I have. Um, I'm not really there to be like, oh, what did this cat, you know, what, what gig did they get? All that does is keep you from producing your best work, I assure you. Um, number nine, moving from fan to professional means to focus on you. If you read less comics, it's okay. Read only the stuff that's inspirational and find alternate new hobbies. So think about this. Something they never really talk about in art schools. Like, Let's say you move, because in my opinion, you know, when you go to school, you're still like a fan of things. You're buying a bunch of art books. You're buying a bunch of stuff from other people. You're standing in line to meet people. At some point, um, if you go to conventions or you're doing work, you don't really have the time to do a lot of that because like you're at a show work on the floor. I don't have time to go to Artist Alley like uh, during the middle of a show, and I'm not going to leave the booth that I paid money to be at to go schmooze, you know. And then after a show, I'm so beat up, I like to go back to my room, recuperate, go back to the floor. So the only time I ever meet people at cons, like other artists, would be um, the the very first day before the show opens. I'll kind of walk around and see some people, and oh, how you doing? Great. And then that's that. So um, that means I moved to a different state. Also, that means that uh, I'm not buying comics every other day at the comic shop. Uh, that's that's mostly because I don't have the time to read all of them, and I'm not a hoarder. I don't just buy things to hoard them. I still buy things I'm a fan of. I'm not going to be like, oh, there's nothing they're making today that I'm not interested in. That's not true. But I moved to a professional level, which means I'm spending a lot of my time making stuff. I have very little time to be a fan of things. So the things that I've found is that um, it's okay to find new things to fill that void. I used to read, you know, hours and hours of comics. Now what I'll do is I'll wait till something's complete, then I'll buy it and make some space at the coffee shop or in the morning uh, or on a, on a holiday when I can read. Or I'll, I'll get into other things that I can I can take down into bite-sized portions. Like when I'm eating my meal, that's when I'll watch a show. I always say, hey, did you see the show? People go, oh, I don't tend to watch TV. I'm like, well, I don't either. But what I do is I watch it when I eat because I have to eat and I have to take time to go eat. So I put the show on usually while I'm cooking so I can see some of it and then I'll watch the, you know, tail end of that um, while I'm eating. And if I go see a movie, it's usually like midnight or 1 a.m. So just understand that, you know, as you grow in different phases of your career, uh, your hobbies and your and, and your time to do things will change. And that's okay, too. Like, um, so let's move on to to number 10. As you get older, uh, your wants uh, change in, in life as they do in art. So um, if your art is sort of getting stagnant, uh, maybe it's your, your life that's changed, but your art mindset hasn't. Now, this is a little weird. So what I'm saying is, you know, you don't like mustard when you're a kid, right? And then as you get older, you like mustard. Uh, you don't like mushrooms. As you get older, you like mushrooms. Uh, yeah. So with art, you may not like a certain thing at a certain phase, and then later... Um, you're like, why haven't I gotten better at this, right? Or maybe you really like, let's say you like drawing anime, but after a while, your art isn't really getting much better. And it may be that you've sort of outgrown that, you know, like maybe you're moving on to other stuff. Maybe you want to paint. Maybe you want to uh, model. Maybe you want to just render in a different style. Don't feel like just because you've always done something or always liked something a certain way, that that's the only way you should be doing it forever. Some people are known for something that they just do, you know, um, and that's really great. However, other people are known just for making really great stuff no matter what they do. So, and I like to think that that should be the philosophy for every artist. Like, whatever you get handed, they're going to be into because you did it. Whatever that is. Don't be too worried about how that's supposed to look. Just make it look right for the project. And as you get older, you really should be trying, always trying new types of art stuff, new art techniques, new things. Because the only way your art's going to improve is for you to grow into different things that you you, uh, you either weren't into or didn't have the talent to do. You know, after a while, you get so good at what you've been doing, you may be really good at something else you never could have accomplished. You've actually reached a plateau, a level, that you're able to move into other areas. But maybe you haven't done that because you always were like, oh, I can't, I could never do that. Then you go to do it, you're like, oh, this is really easy. You'd be awfully, awfully surprised um, at at what you're capable of doing once you're, you've eliminated all the basic stupid shit. So let's move on. Number 11. Uh, don't wait for the world to discover you. If every company out there ignores you, then just make your own stuff. 
So they really need to teach you this in art school. You apply and apply and apply, and no one wants to pay you to do stuff ever. So then you're like, well, I guess that means I'm not a professional artist, right? Uh, no. That means that that company just didn't hire someone with common sense. So what you need to do is be a business person. Um, you need to get out there and get anyone to buy anything you do and just get in the habit of stepping and repeating that. I remember I was at this phase of my career around 2010 when, you know, there was no money at GameFam. Um, I was still producing the magazines for Dave because there was like this promise of getting paid, but that wasn't happening. And I had bills to pay. And I'm like, you know, this is fucking bullshit. So no one's going to pay me 150 bucks. Like I had to pay some rent and I was like a little short. I was like, so no one's going to pay me 150 bucks for one drawing. But will they pay, well, can I get 15 people to pay me $10, you know, plus shipping um, for for a drawing? And I could get 15 people. Matter of fact, I got 150 people to pay me for $10 drawings. So I actually had, that bought me, you know, a whole month's worth of stuff um, just to work my ass off and draw. So, so yeah, I got to draw them and pack them and ship them and put them out in the mail, but so what? I mean... You know, with any job comes some level of, of effort you don't want to do, some level of grinding, right? Some level of tediousness. It is a job. However, I didn't wait for someone to just say, oh, Rob, we're going to pay you this great amount of money. But I was also mindful of what the market, what I could expect from the market that I was in, you know? So um, you're going to have to be nimble, you know? And don't just feel like, uh, so what if a bunch of people are paying you to do sketches? If they're paying you, you're getting paid to do something. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I got into this to make a living being an artist. I didn't get into this to make a living being an artist at one specific place for a set amount of money. And if that isn't it, then I, that doesn't value uh, my talent. You know, this is a really strange world we live in, um, especially now with art. Like, uh, there just aren't a lot of places where you can go to and be paid a grip of money and go home and have a nice life. It's a tough life. You know, you're going to be working all sorts of weird hours. And you never know if you're going to be laid off. They could just up and dissolve the whole art department overnight. So you always want to be able to be in the mindset of like, if everything fails tomorrow, I'm cool. And because I know how to react to that situation. So let's move on to the next thing. 12, don't involve yourself with other artists and writers just to make yourself feel important or more professional. Uh, your art does the talking and it's a waste of time. So what I mean by this is... um. In, in art school, they never really teach you how to interact with other artists. And what I constantly find is people get, they'll see you do something and they'll get very excited. They're, in, they're inspired. They go, wow, this person's great. Sometimes they're like looking at your stuff and relating it to like them and what they want to do. And they feel like they've been on a journey with you. Maybe they've been following your art for a couple of years. And so they're like, oh, Rob, I just want to really work on this stuff. Or I would, be, I would be willing to do anything you wanted to do. Did you want to collaborate? And that's really flattering. However, um, to say yes to all that stuff will only sidetrack you. Um, it leads to nothing at the end of the day, in my opinion. Um, and, and if you feel like you need to like also separately align yourself with more professional artists to make yourself feel important, uh, it's a complete waste of time. Every artist, in my opinion, unless they're financially secure, like they are hundred percent, they could live off no income, um, for years, right? They are really secure. They are in the business of taking care of their own shit. They'll be a fan of you. Oh, this guy's cool. You should talk to this guy. But they're not there to pay your bills. You're there to pay your bills. So just like being a hanger on with some cat because you're like, oh man, this guy's a go bar. I'm going to be friends with him. I'm going to go somewhere. It'll do nothing. You know, it's going to go nowhere. They have their own shit. And you shouldn't be like mad at them because they haven't like solved your fucking problems, you know? So, um, and at the end of the day, if you really want respect from other artists as an artist, then just let your art do the work, you know, like if they're inspired by the shit you're doing, if they, they feel like you threw down and they feel like they couldn't do what you do or they don't know how, or they would be challenged to rise to that, you know, occasion, then they'll respect you, you know, or be intimidated by the way, you know, um, just trying to be like, real, I hate faux enthusiasm and people are just like, I just want to be a part of something. And I just want to like, Oh, I just want to, you know, because it's very, it's flattering, but it's at the end of the day, to me, it just, it's a waste of time. And it's really like, you know, you should just go and do your own thing. You know, thank you. I'm really busy, but please, I look forward to anything you do, you know? So, um, 
Number 13, don't expect other artists to like you. Uh, they only, uh, only care about your clients, customers, and fans. It kind of goes back to what I was saying before. If other artists don't like you, I've worked in art departments where nobody but the art director and like a good friend, so maybe the person I was working with in the art department liked me, mostly because a lot of artists are just jealous. If you do anything of any kind of talent or level of skill, or they feel like you're hustling all night while they were out there doing the salsa dance or fucking you know, going to art shows and not producing work, then they're going to be jealous and their ego is going to be in the way. And they're going to basically take it out on you and be like, oh, that guy just, you know, I mean, I don't give a shit. The only thing I care about are the people that are paying me money and are fans of my work. You know, they're the ones that take time to write insane comments. Like this really inspired me. It's really great how you add this gloss to the eye or you did this or you did that. Those are the people I care about. I don't care if some other nidnik artist in some fucking bullshit art department or at a convention or working at some well-known Marvel DC image company, you know, is like my best friend or is impressed with me. I, I don't, I don't have like mom and dad issues, you know, like I don't need that support. I only care about the people that, uh, that are directly supporting me, you know, either with consistent praise or not praise but consistent involvement you know enthusiasm or or financial you know involvement so that's it um and you should be too 14 give it time and pressure think creatively instead of grandly so what this means is you want to produce the world's greatest comic you know you're just going to have to give it time and pressure you know you're not producing the, your best art right now if you're aware that you're not producing your best art and you're doing everything you can, you're focusing on the fundamentals, you're improving how you draw hands, you're improving how you tell a story, then after a set amount of time, after a period of time, whatever that is, you will be successful. However, if you want to sort of ensure success quicker rather than later, my advice to you is think creatively, not grandly. And what that means is you want to draw the world's greatest comic, you know, and it's like 12 issues long and it's this crazy story. Uh, find a way to do that in 48 pages or 24 pages. You know, maybe it's like a third of what you wanted to do. But, you know, if you just think creatively, you'd be able to finish the project and move on. As opposed to thinking about this mega Lord of the Rings style fucking thing that, you know, you'll probably just get burnt out on. So, um, and that even applies to like one, one piece, you know, uh, efforts. I had a piece that I did called The Critters that they wanted me to do a play back in the day. And he had 150 characters. And I, working three days straight, I was only able to get half of it, you know, even close to done. And I was like, look, if I'm going to make the, the, the deadline, then that magazine had to ship. There's no way to fuck around with that. Um, I got to start coloring this now. So I had to cut it in half. Everyone loved it. Dave was a little pissed that it wasn't bigger. But I, to this day, have no idea how you could have fit 150 characters on one page anyway in that magazine. So um, it worked out better. Uh, what I did is I put all these consoles on the bottom with different games to make it feel like it was representing all the different consoles of uh, video gaming, which, you know, he didn't get, but fans love it. So if, just again, if you just add a little bit of creative touches, you can shave yourself a lot of effort. Let me have a sip of my coffee here. 15. Where do I go to sell commissions and prints and stuff? You know, I get this a lot. People say, oh, Rob, you're selling a lot of sketches. Or Rob, you're selling a lot of prints. Oh, how are you doing that? And my advice to them is I go to the commission and uh, print place where you just go up there and everyone gives you and showers you with money, you know, uh, because that's my wise ass response to their jealous ass question. Um, there is no one place. I'm working everywhere. I got stuff on comic art fans, comic art community, DeviantArt, Tumblr, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter fucking you know message forms all over the place and um if i really want i've done some kickstarter stuff it takes a little bit of everything you have to figure out what's kind of working at certain points things come in sometimes i'm doing really good on prints sometimes i'm doing way better on commissions um sometimes i just do some art put it up on there it sells i do a little bit of everything and i move forward as much as humanly possible um and I understand, too, that sometimes I may have to take a little bit less and do a lot of them to make up the difference. So if that means I have to spend 12 months sitting there drawing, sorry, 12 months, 12 hours a day for a month drawing a bunch of head sketches to pay my bills for the next six months, I'm going to do it. And I don't really care 
if I get a bunch of like, why are you only drawing head sketches? When are you going to do some other stuff? It's like, I'm not, my, 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 my portfolio and what I post online isn't, um, it isn't a TV channel that's there to entertain you minute by minute. It's just a way for me to collect uh, all the stuff I've been doing. So if for 30 days I'm working on something and that isn't your beef, come back in a month. Don't worry about it. I'll be working on something you'll like soon enough, you know. It ebbs and flows. But if you think that I'm just going to one place and getting whatever I'm getting because uh, it's there to hand it to me, you're at your fucking gourd. You go to Kickstarter, put up some prints, see how they move. I've seen a lot of people do jack shit, you know. The one thing I pride myself on is I may not be famous, but I have learned the art. I feel I have really learned the art on how to get people's attention with my stuff, whether it's insanely illustrated or not. So, you know, you, that that to me is making likable, you know, compelling stuff to invoke an emotion in somebody. You know, there are a, a, a million better, more talented illustrators than me. There are people doing way better. There are people with a lot more talent doing far worse. I don't really worry about what they're selling, where they are, where they've gone. They did this, they did that. I don't care. I just really focus on what I want to do and what I have to do. Um, and, and I make sure I'm as visible as possible. And I'm always putting out offers uh, when I have stuff, the uh, availabilities, when I have prints I want to move out. I put them everywhere, everywhere I can think of, you know. And then you have to get the shit into people's hands. You have to. You can't take a bunch of money from someone and sit on it. So... Um, let's go to number 16 why failure is the bestest uh, early option so art school doesn't really teach you how to fail Um, some instructors have talked about it but for the most part you know it's always the the best scenario right that we're going to get you a job somewhere it's better to take really big risks when you're really young because you're only kind of like supporting yourself you don't have kids you don't have a mortgage you probably don't have a lot of credit card debt Hopefully you have no credit card debt. Um, so you're willing to move around everywhere, and you're willing. You have the energy and the mental like absorbedness, sponginess, to deal with a lot of shit. Um, you 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 want to take those big risks early on. Um, and if it's not working out, don't be like, oh, it's the end of the world. I suck. No, you just took a lot of big risks, um, and it's better to take that early. So as you get older. And maybe if some things don't work out, you've been there before, you know. I had been pretty lucky early on that I didn't have a lot of stressful stuff occur to me in my art career. But around the age of 30, 31, I had a lot of stressful shit occur. And I'll be honest, I should have taken bigger moves when I was younger. I really should have. Because I didn't know how to deal with it right away, you know. I was always used to making a consistent forty to $60,000 a year drawing. And when I went from forty to $60,000 a year to like, 4,000, that was a culture shock for me. Um, so I've managed to um, rise above it and solve that problem, but uh, I believe that if, if I had taken those risks earlier and had been more creative and, and a bit more uh, nimble around my early 20s or mid-20s, uh, I wouldn't have had to deal with that problem like the way I did. Uh, also, you should remember, number 17, failure does not reflect effort. What I mean by that is, you worked your ass off. You produced a really great piece of work. It made you no money, and no one saw it sucked financially. Doesn't mean you didn't put in a great amount of effort or even produced a bad product. Um, I feel I produced uh, seven or eight really great gaming magazines. You know, I'm really fun. I'm really proud, especially the last two or three, uh, the last three or four issues. Run issue three through issues issue six and seven. I was really proud of that. So, um, but that magazine did jack shit. I worked my ass off on Monstroids. That did jack shit for me. So that had nothing to do with my effort. And you can't be like, I, I, you know, things aren't working and they're consistently not working for years. Um, it's not always because you didn't try, you know, there are a lot of other components. It has to get printed. It has to get marketed. Uh, it has to be, you know, in a climate in which people are looking for that sort of thing or they can find that sort of thing. So, you know, just don't take it too personal. It's hard. I always say, like, it's easy to say that shit when it's not you or 
you're the, not the one that has to pay your bills. But, you know, I, looking back, I, I can't stress enough that failure doesn't reflect effort. You know, it can be a result of a lack of effort by, by all means. But a lot of times, uh, the thing they never really teach you about is when you did everything you could and you produced great work and it still sucked. You know, or it just, not sucked, but it just financially didn't do well. You know, and you still tanked. So a really great uh, example of that would be the game Journey on PS3. Phenomenal game. It's in my, like, top ten ever. Uh, or probably top five ever. Bankrupted the whole company. So <laughs> go look it up, you know. Um, but they put a lot of effort into that, and it's phenomenal. So let's move on to number 18. Uh, it's it's not good enough. Uh, if it's, uh, it's not good enough, let the fans tell you that. When they do work on it. Oh, fine. Okay. Don't be like, I'm afraid to show my art because it's not good enough. Get your stuff out there. However, if people are telling you your stuff needs work, then listen to them. Don't fight it. You know? I refrain from sharing my art with the internet um, up until like 2005. For a long time. I didn't get on DeviantArt until like 2005. And that was because a writer friend of mine really stressed I should. I should have been on that, like, in the second it went up, you know? Um, and even when I was a kid, I never really took my art to the comic shop. I'd always tell them I drew, but I'd never show anything. Because I didn't feel I was good enough. Well, they knew I was a kid. They weren't expecting me to be Jim Lee, you know? They would have given me some advice, asked me, you know, hey, you should try this, you should try that. And I should have took the advice and, and focus on it. I instead went to Comic-Con, watched everyone else get trashed for having shitty portfolios, and then refused to show myself until I felt it met all that criteria, you know? So I think I waited too long to start showing my stuff because there's really no way you can like take a thousand artists and take everything and be the best one like, and hit all criteria. You know, you sort of have to like get the basics down, produce, get feedback, refine, produce, get feedback, refine, step and repeat for 10 years, you know. So, um, but hey, if people are giving you like, hey, you know, you should work on this or your stuff sucks. And I'm not talking like one or two people out of a thousand. I'm talking like if a thousand people are telling you your shit sucks. They're on to something, you know? So take it as a thank you. Um, number 19. Here's something they never talked to you about Comic-Con at art school. If you go to conventions, or you're going to be one of those artists, and you're going to sell art and comic books and stuff, uh, here's some advice. Stay the fuck at your booth. Stay at your booth. Don't leave your booth. You paid 200 bucks for an artist alley table. You paid 900 bucks or 600 bucks or whatever, $1,200 for a fucking table in the middle of the show floor. Why the fuck are you gone? You better be at the bathroom and back in a jiff. And I'm telling you, you better hold it. You know, you better make sure that unless you are so famous, you know, like you're a Jim Lee or a J. Scott Campbell or one of those guys, um, you should be there working your ass off, selling shit, drawing for people, always be drawing. I, 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 you know, I have a buddy I shared a booth with and I told him this, you know, I said, dude, why do you keep leaving the booth? You know? Oh, I have to go over here. No, 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 no. I'm like, you can do that at any time. Why are you leaving now? And every time you, that person walks up, someone shows up looking for him. Never fails. You know? If it, if you feel like you're not selling enough stuff at your booth or you're not doing well, you know, and you're trying to, like, walk around to kind of shake your mind off it, don't. Sit your ass right there. Draw something really, really well. Put up $10 sketches. Whatever you got to do, you know, but stay the fuck at your booth. You know, you got all year to fuck around and walk around and see your friends and shit. You know, the day you're spending money on floor space is not the day to do it. Um, number 20, uh, deviant art views, Facebook likes, and Twitter followers don't equal money. I can't state this enough. Deviant art views, Facebook likes, and Twitter followers do not equal money. They only equal deviant art views, Facebook likes, and Twitter followers. I have, I have five daily deviations. I have almost two thousand entries into my gallery. Um, I've been artist of the month at Imagine Effects. I have like three hundred thousand deviant art views out of like eight years. You know, I should have three million, right? Uh, I have like eighteen hundred Facebook likes, which is nothing. I've been posting every day consistently for three years. You know. Um, 
I have like 500 Twitter people and it goes up and down a hundred, give or take, you know, what I post. Um, so, uh, however, I've always kept myself afloat because that shit doesn't translate to dollars. It just translate to exactly, it's a way for people to come find you, to talk to you and to interact and see your stuff. If you want money, you know, you, 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 I don't need 300,000 people. I need a core, I need a good core, you know, hundred to 500 people. That's what I need. So, um, you know, utilize those as tools, but don't think that you, just cause you get a million DeviantArt views that you're going to be rich and famous. Cause that's just internet dollars. It don't mean shit. I, I know plenty of people who have, I know, I know a few people that have a million and two, three million and they're like, they don't know how I, like, well, how do I get stuff? I'm like, well, fucking, you got a full audience, make it happen, dude. I don't know, you know? I don't know. So, uh, 21, be patient with new fans and clients. They aren't a part of your world, and treat everyone as if they are new to your stuff. So, let's just say I just had a whole, like, online battle with someone over perspective and shit like that. And then two months later, someone over there comes and wants some advice on what they should do. And I see their perspectives fucked up. I don't, like, take it out on them, you know, and be like, you should know perspective and come off like some condescending art snob. That's something art school will never teach you how to do. And again, it's how to a- interact with your clientele. Every fan, every fan who purchases something from me is a client. Uh, people who just give me praise or critiques or they follow my work, they're fans. You know, that's how I separate the two. Um, but I have to treat everyone like they're new, you know. Sometimes I'll be talking to some people who've been following the cast for, like, two or three years. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, we just did this. They're like, oh, yeah, I know. And I'm like, I, I get that they probably know. But I always try to talk to them in a way in which maybe they don't know. So I don't just, like, talk to them as if I'm assuming some stuff. Because it can come off as arrogant. So that's some, that's some good advice. Uh, number 22. Be firm, though. If you're courteous, then they should be, too. Uh, you should take take offense to losing a job. Don't take offense to losing a troublesome client. So I had this guy who backed me on some stuff and sort of came out with a couple, like, comments about, oh, you know, what's up, Rob? Are you doing this or that? Are you, like, scamming me or some stuff? And I, I get that it was more than likely just like a, what do you call that? Like a random kind of like snarky statement, like just kind of like out of jest, you know. Um, then you say, hey, you know, I don't do that. Everything's cool. No, 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 no. But if people take it to the next level and they're like, well, you know, okay, here's a better example. I had some guys a game fan who constantly wanted free shit. You know, like well, I've been backing for years. I should get, you know, send me something, send me something, send me something. Eventually, you're like, you know what? I'm going to un, I'm going to ban you from this page. You know what I mean? If you don't stop asking for free stuff, you know. I don't give out free shit. I don't, I, I mean, I've only done one or two free drawings for anybody ever. So, um, if someone's really causing you more trouble than they're worth and you've done everything you can and they don't want to like play ball, then it ain't your fault if you drop them and don't worry about losing them. You know, it's okay. You be courteous to them, but the, but the second they don't like start to reciprocate that, then it's cool to cut them out the, the loop. I remember going to a con and I was sitting there, I had this drawing for sale. And this really, really pretty woman comes up with her, her entourage. And she looks at my stuff and looks at Joe, my, Joe, my buddy Joe, starts looking at his, his art and started making fun of his stuff, you know, just like clowning it. And then she was looking at this one drawing I had and she's like, how much is this? And I'm like, it's not for sale. She's like, oh, but it says right there. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's uh, like 300. She's like, oh, what, but how much is it for me? I'm like, 600. And she's like, no, 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 but for me, I'm like, it's $6,000. You know? And I'm like, I don't think you understand. You just sat here and, like, made fun of my friend for, like, 15 minutes. And now I'm supposed to, like, sell you something? Like, I mean, fuck that, you know? Um, and just because you're pretty, I'm not giving you a discount because you're pretty. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I grew up around strippers, so I'm not impressed. You know, like, um, I got way past that a long time ago. So, um. I sold things to people whom I like and that I feel like it's going to a good home. Uh, and if you insult the people that are at a table with me, then I will sell you nothing ever because I don't give a shit. So let's move on. Number 23, every job is a gamble. It's a marathon, not a sprint. This kind of gets back to like that early failure thing. 
But just understand that anytime you take a job or you create a job for yourself, whether it's commissions or a comic book, it's a gamble. You're gambling on spending your time and effort. Um, understand that it's when you take those projects on, it's it is a marathon. It's the whole project all the way through to completion and shipment. You know, it's not, let me work on it really, really, you know, I'll work on it enthusiastically for a couple of days, then get bored and never finish. You know, like, that's like infatuated love, right? You're really into this girl, you finally got her, right? And then, or a guy, whatever. And, um, and then now that they're interested in you, you're not interested. You know, you got it, I'm oh, moving on. You know, you have to follow through, you have to seal the deal. Number 24, focusing on on making things, not showing off. This is my advice for everybody. And uh, we all as artists like to present our work to the world and be told how great we are. You know, yay, you're so much. You're the best, Rob. Thank you, thank you. Yes, praise, shower, love me, right? Um, however, my focus is getting up and producing stuff, not going back online and seeing how they thanked me and told me how great I was for some shit I drew yesterday or five minutes ago or a month ago, you know? Um, you just got to get on with making stuff, you know, and producing work. Uh, trying to be like, oh, I remember when I was in art school, there was this little clique that would form out in the um, the quad. In the, and they'd all sit around the table with their art books drawn, all the things that were comfortable drawing, you know, like, it was the same stuff. Like, these cats drew Disney characters, these cats drew anime, and they would get this huge crowd of people and everyone would tell them how great they were. Um, but I would be up all night, you know, finishing t-shirts for work and then doing freelance comic stuff, you know? So I would come into school being pretty tired, you know? So I would just want to get to class and, um, take my fucking notes and try not to fall asleep. So these guys would be like, oh, how come Rob doesn't draw there? Oh, Rob doesn't draw. And they would always clown me. Yeah, every one of these fuckers, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't mean that like I'm mad at them, but it's that mindset. Like, every one of these cats have come up with me since. They don't, they can't produce the work I'm producing, you know? And that's because, like, I fucking literally spent all my time working on real stuff, not sitting around a quad trying to be praised about how great I was, you know, showing off. So, you know, if you want a result, you need to make certain that, you know, you're, you're applying the appropriate amount of effort to get it. If you just want to be told how great you are, that's one thing. If you want to, you know, produce great work, that's another, you know. So, and then lastly, number 25. Remember to walk the fuck outside. You know, even me, uh, you know, I forget this. And I've had to really learn this over the last year or two. But, you know, walking the dog, uh, taking an afternoon at the beach, answering your friend's phone calls when they call is far more important to your art career honestly than drawing a really good spider-man or finishing page 2014 you know, pa finishing page 14 in the middle of a comic book you know if you don't make time for friends and family right um and always use deadlines as an excuse to not hang out with people and get outside um then they won't ever allow you the space to do that. It's just going to ruin friendships and family and friends. It's a balance. It's a hard balance, you know, but you, if I, I feel like at this point, when I'm going out somewhere with someone, we're out to do things, you know, I'm out with family and friends. We're having a good time doing that. I'm not sitting around wondering about Paige, you know, about the new pinup or the painting. However, when I'm in the middle of the painting, I don't want to hear anyone like, you know, how can we go to the party, you know? come over, you go, come on, Robbie's with me, you know, I'm working on stuff right now, uh, when's the next party, you know, um, but I do answer my phone, I don't let it just ring, you know, that's the other thing too, I have friends that love to fucking just not answer their phone for months, you know, at that point, I'll just stop calling, you know, like, don't be like, everyone's like encroaching on your space, you know, it's very hard, you know, it's, it's the artists are finicky, you know, you, you're, you're, you're almost like a dead animal, when one minute you want to be sociable, next minute you just want to be in your hole. I have a dog, and she doesn't, she'll, she'll do any trick you can ask her to do. But if she's in her kennel, she doesn't want to shake. She doesn't want to lie down. That's her space, you know. Um, and I sort of, I've come to respect that. I don't ask her to do tricks inside her kennel. So, 
but I remember to take her for walks and enjoy life because God forbid, you know, something happened to me tomorrow and I don't remember what this, the, the feeling of sand on my feet is, you know, because I was in my room, you know, sketching out fucking earthworm gyms for four days straight. So anyway, um, those are 25 things I could think of that they should really teach in art school more than how to turn on Photoshop and everything else. So it will never happen. I understand that. If you like any of this, you want to hear more, uh, any other things, questions, quips, comments, complaints, love, praise, whatever, send them to Robert, or no, sorry, send them to Rob at Sketchcraft. That's the name of the podcast, sketch, C-R-A-F-T dot com. Also join us on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the YouTubes, and even our... I will talk to you all soon. Later. Later.